Armando Hasurugan Biology and Medicine videos, please make sure to subscribe, join the forming group for the latest videos. Uh, please visit Facebook Armando Hasurugan, make sure to like, and there you can also, if you would like, ask questions, answer questions, and post some interesting things, such as your artworks. We greatly appreciate it. And you can also change the quality settings of this video to the highest one for better graphics. And so we're continuing on with the cell membrane videos. Uh, we're looking back at saturated fatty acids and unsaturated fatty acids. So what are the differences? So saturated fatty acids, carboxyl, end with the hydrocarbon tail. So essentially it would look like this. Uh, unsaturated fatty acid has a double bond in the carbon chain and so forms a kink. So what does this mean? Well, it means two things. So one, well the first one, the more longer the fatty tail is without a double bond, it means that the higher the melting point will be. So with, if it's saturated fatty acids, the longer it is, the higher the melting point. Number two, however, the more double bonds in the fatty acid tail, the lower the melting point will be. And so if you think about it, it means that the unsaturated fatty acid tail can be degraded quicker. And so sometimes scientists or people think that unsaturated fat is better. And you can be the judge of that. Okay, now let us put these unsaturated fatty acids and saturated fatty acids into context by putting it on the lipid a membrane bilayer. So as you can see we have some saturated fatty acid, uh, fatty acid tails and some unsaturated which forms kinks. Here is an integral protein which goes across the membrane, peripheral protein in the intracellular layer. Um, we have also carbohydrates coming off the protein and the fats. Let's step away from the saturated and unsaturated fatty acids and now look at the structures of the lipid membrane bilayer. So one important thing is that glycolipids and glycoproteins always face out, facing the extracellular fluid. Two, the peripheral proteins always face the cytoplasm usually. And three, the lipid distribution is asymmetry, so asymmetrical. So there's this different distribution of the different types of lipids um, on the first layer, the top layer, and the bottom layer. Uh, let's go back to the different types of the lipid membranes. We have the phospholipids, remember, and the glycolipids. Glycolipids are cerebrosides and gangliosides. And then we have also the sterols, composed of cholesterol, which we're about to look into later. The phospholipids are composed of the sphingolipids and the phosphoglycerides. The phosphoglycerides, we have phosphatidylcholine, phosphatidylethanolamine, phosphatidylserine, phosphatidylinositol, phosphatidylglycerol, and cardiolipid. For the sphingolipids, we have sphingomyelin. So these are the different types of lipid membranes, right? So going back here again, number three, there is lipid distribution. The lipid distribution is asymmetrical. So to portray this example, I'll draw a graph here. So we have a scale 100% on the top, which composes the outer membrane, and 100% to the bottom, which composes the inner membrane. So, for example, this is a red blood cell plasma membrane. So let's look at the different components that are in the red blood cell plasma membrane, like the phosphoglycerides, and how much of it is composed on the outer membrane and the inner membrane in respect with the inner membrane. So for example, here we have phosphatidylethanolamine. And as you can see, there's higher concentrations of phosphatidylethanolamine in the inner membrane. Phosphatidylinositol, which is a second messenger, has also higher concentrations on the inner membrane, they're on the inner layer. Phosphatidylserine, which is very similar to phosphatidylinositol, there's higher concentrations on the inner leaflet. Phosphatidylcholine, on the other hand, has high, is a higher, there's higher concentration of phosphatidylcholine on the outer membrane leaflet, as well as sphingomyelin, which is highly concentrated on the outer uh, membrane. So as you can see, the distribution of the different types of lipids vary in the red blood cell plasma membrane. And this is important to know. Now going back to the lipid bilayer structure, remember the unsaturated fatty acids which forms kinks? Well they form gaps essentially, right? As you can see. So what fills these gaps? Well, sterols fills this gap. So let's have a closer look at this uh, sterols again. So sterols are put where kinks are. 
where the gaps are, which are formed by the kinks. As mentioned, sterols are the two types, cholesterol and ergosterol. Now, ergosterol are found in yeast and fungi. We are mainly concentrating on cholesterol, and cholesterol increases membrane flexibility. So let's draw this structure again. We have unsaturated fat and a saturated fat, the unsaturated forming kinks. So there's a gap. Now these molecules are cholesterol, and they fill in the gaps, as you can see. Cholesterol, if we look at the molecular structure, composes of a hydroxyl group on one end and a fatty acid tail on the other. So the hydroxyl group is a polar head, it's hydrophilic, whereas the hydrocarbon, the fatty acid tail, is an alkyl side chain and it's hydrophobic. So that's why it fits in this gap, simple, easily. So some facts about cholesterol. So there can be one cholesterol molecule per phospholipid molecule in the membrane. When cholesterol binds to the kinks, it stiffens this area. So low concentration of cholesterol decreases fluidity in the membrane. However, high concentrations of cholesterol increases fluidity in the membrane. So this section is able to move around and are, are more flexible. Also, cholesterol decreases permeability to small water-soluble molecules. So here we have a water-soluble molecule. It decreases permeability of that molecule. Five, importantly, cholesterol enhances flexibility. And six, cholesterol also enhances stability. And now we are mainly looking at how cholesterol enhances flexibility. And I'll show you this example by drawing you up a diagram. So cholesterol enhances flexibility. What does this mean? Well, for example, here we have a typical cell, right? And we'll cut this section here and zoom into this membrane plasma membrane. So in the plasma membrane, we have unsaturated and saturated fats with cholesterol in it. As you can see by this diagram, there's more cholesterol on the inner leaflet. Now cells are not always the shape, of course. If cells change its structure, the plasma membrane also changes, such as um, here. As you can see, this plasma membrane is completely different to the plasma membrane on, on the top. And so what happens is when it bends, the top portion will form more gaps. The top leaflet will form more gaps in respect to the inner leaflet. And so cholesterol moves from the inner leaflet to the top leaflet to compensate for this. So what happens here, we have cholesterol previously here. It moves. And this movement mechanism by cholesterol is called the flip-flop movement. Funny. And so this flip-flopping can also occur to other lipid molecules. So other lipid mo uh, membranes, types of membranes, can also do this. What I'm talking about is these different types of lipid membranes. So here, the sphingomyelin can flip-flop, the phosphatidylcholine can flip-flop, the phosphatidylserine and phosphatidylethanolamine. And this is what we are going to look at in the next video. We'll look more closely at the dynamics of movement within the cell membrane, and also other types of movement, rotations, etc. Uh, so please make sure to like this video, comment, and subscribe. Thank you all.